Good morning. I'm Lynn Bartlow. I'm the lead pastor here. And I'm Kim Ogle. I'm the associate pastor here. You may or may not be on. You know, microphones always work better when you turn the power on. Usually that's my trick, not yours. So in between us, we have more than enough to greet. Are we then? You are. You're good. Yay. So welcome to St. Mark's. If you're worshiping with us online, we welcome you also. We're glad that you're here. Uh, there are announcements in your bulletin. Um, if we invite you who are here in person to, um, if you did not sign in on the iPads on your way in, then grab the green sheet of paper in front of you and sign your attendance so we know that you're here. And uh, drop that in the offering plate when you come by, if, when they come by. If you'd rather, you can point your phone and your photo um, your photo app to, at the screen at the QR code and sign in. Those of you who are online, this is a great place to do that as well. Um, sign in by um, scanning the QR code and going to that website that pops up and signing in your attendance this morning with us so that we know you're here. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we'd especially like you to fill out that green piece of paper so we can share a bit about St. Mark's with you um, in this coming week. We promise we won't give you five things a day. Um, <laughs> We, but we would love to, to share more about St. Mark's with you. There are announcements in your bulletin. And also, um, we have beautiful displays of poinsettias all across here and in different parts on Christmas Eve. So if you would like to purchase a poinsettia plant that you can take home after, um, after Christmas, or at least after Christmas Eve, then this is the last date to sign up for poinsettias. So um, look on... In the uh, narthex, in there the are sign-up yeah. sheets um, to, to make them in honor or in memory of someone. So we encourage you to do that this week. And if you're worshiping online, you can get to it, too, from the website. Um, also, this afternoon, there is a concert. I love the concerts that come here. We've had, um, thanks to Jordan scheduling them, we've had quite a few this season. So um, there's a concert this afternoon and um, another one on Saturday and next Sunday. Lots of stuff going on. As you leave the space today, there are, post, there are stacks of postcards. These are ready for you to put on your refrigerator if you want a reminder of our Christmas Eve services, or um, they are ready to be mailed. All you have to do is put a stamp on it, an address, and send it to somebody, or hand it to your neighbor, or whatever you'd like. It's a tool for you uh, to make an easy invitation to folks to come. We have eight services on Christmas Eve uh, between okay. our three campuses because if you haven't noticed, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. So we have our usual services in the morning as well as the afternoon service and evening services. So uh, pick one up, pick five up, pick 50 up. We'll happily make more if they're all gone at the end of the day today. So there's that. In the seat back in front of you, Linda will invite you later to consider a Christmas Eve offering or, or Christmas offering. This is the envelope for that. They're in the pew backs in front of you. Um, it doesn't say on it Christmas offering, so I wanted to be sure that you were aware that's what that is. So like I said, she'll mention it later on in the service, but these are in the seat backs in front of you. Welcome to worship this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it. it. That's from Psalm 118. We say that every Sunday morning so we remember whose we are and why we come to worship. Welcome. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Isaiah invites the people, prepare the way of the Lord, make way his paths, and uh, we, as we come to worship, prepare our hearts, our lives, our spirits for worship, for the Lord, for this Christmas season. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing our opening hymn.
Let us pray. God of all love, our hearts await your coming. Make your way within us, we pray, as we offer to you our prayers and songs and promises. Draw us to your divine banquet and feed us with your true food. We offer ourselves to you in hope and expectation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite our kids to come forward, and the rest of you may be seated. We have a blessed event this morning. So um, we have a baby who's going to be baptized. Some of you have already been baptized, and some of you haven't. It, it, the, God, you think so? Okay, you can ask your parents. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> I baptized you. I know you were baptized. <laughs> so you see this rock? Isn't this great? You, um, before you leave, you can touch it. Um, this, God's, or Jesus said that he is the rock. So rocks are stable, right? And they're nice and sturdy. This one's especially sturdy and extremely heavy. So this rock has a dip in it. It's special. We call this a baptismal font. And in just a few minutes, that pretty girl over there is going to be baptized. I know. That's a good thing, huh? I'm going to put some water in here and my fingers, and she's going to get some water on her forehead, who will say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, because this is hard to understand, but... That means that Jesus is three, three in one. And she'll be baptized into the family of Jesus, just like you guys were, if you've been baptized. There's not really an age limit on this. Oh, good. Okay. So um, when you go home, talk to your parents and see if you have been baptized. They'll tell you for sure, right? That's okay. I was a grown-up, so it, there's not a time limit. <laughs> All right, so let's pray. So God, we do thank you for um, this gift of baptism. We thank you that your son um, brought this to us and that we follow that, and we've followed for hundreds of years. And God, we know that um, no matter what, we are part of your family, but when we're baptized, we're a special part. So God, we ask that you watch over all of these children and, um, and protect them and save them because we know that they are your children. Be with all of us in the coming week. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I think your teachers are going to take you back to Sunday school, okay? So you're going to have to stand. There you go. Good, mo <clears throat> Good morning. I am Frederick Morrison. I am Owen Morrison. And I'm Dory. From manna in the wilderness to the bread from heaven. It's in Let us make room at the table for family and outcast, friends and enemies. We light the candle of love, the light of abundance that satisfies our longing. Let us sing. Our choir will lead us in our Advent song. I invite the Jackson family to come up and Brenda, our lay leader. And if grandparents and uncle would like to come up, that's fine too. No? You're, you're the videographer, right? <laughs> 
Hi. Hi. She came into my office and I almost didn't let her go. <laughs> okay. So brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through the water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without a price. I present to you this congregation, Savannah Paisley Jackson for baptism. Since the earliest times, the vows of Christian baptism have consisted of the renunciation of all that is evil and then the profession of faith and loyalty to Christ. Parents and other sponsors affirm these vows for themselves and take on the responsibility of sponsorship. So parents and grandparents and sponsors, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. So say I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? So say I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior, put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people of ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. <laughs> Those lights are fantastic. So will you, as Christ's body, the church, Affirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include Savannah in um, now before you for your care? With, with God's help, we will proclaim the good news. This water, you're going to be baptized. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the person who receives it, to wash away her sin, to clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised in Christ, she may share in his final victory. Amen. Do you want to come see me? Let's go see. Look. Look. Oh my gosh, you are so cute. Aren't you? You may not get her back. Savannah Paisley Jackson, I baptize you in the name of the Spirit, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, yay. Where'd Daddy go? <laughs> You're so cute. I have to pick up my paper. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll keep this. <laughs> she was my favorite person in the youth group. <laughs> the Holy Spirit work within you that by being born through water and the Spirit, you may be faith a faithful disciple of Christ. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you... Members of the household of God, I commend Savannah to your love and care, do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love.
and I walk around with her. So we have a gift for you that our, <coughs> one of our lay leaders, Brenda, is going to give to mom and dad. And you, who have just pledged to watch after this little angel and help her grow in her faith, get to meet her. All right, would you welcome her with your applause? God bless. Uh. Today we read from the letter Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. We hear what is thought of, a, of as early hymn that the church would sing when they gathered for worship. Hear these words from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in the human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Hi, my name is Evelyn. Hi, my name is Landon. Hi, I am sorry. When I think of Christmas, I think of candy canes, sweet food, really just sweets in general. When I think of Christmas, I think of fudge because my family always makes fudge. Love means to me, means friendship to me. When I think of love, I think of family and always being there for each other and having fun. Love is like a feeling about a person or thing, and no matter what that person thing does, you always learn to forgive them because that's what God did it, because God loved us and He always forgives us. So you have to learn to forgive that person or thing because that's what God teaches us to do. How many, of you, how many of you have gone over to experience a selfie gallery yet? All right, a few more than last week. The rest of you, what are you waiting on? If, if you don't think you can do a selfie, that's all right. If you don't even know what a selfie is, that's all right. After service, go through the gate here around to eight and nine, and um, one of the uh, students or Rachel over there will take a picture with you or help you do it on your own um, and uh, experience our selfie gallery. People pay good money for this and we offer it for nothing. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we are grateful for this day, for your love and for the tastes of the season. We pray that you would move among us, that we might experience and know how we are loved. Um, make my words be yours and help us to hear your message for us this day. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. This Advent season we are focusing on our five senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, and well we'll probably skip over smell, but did you smell as you walked in the narthex, the, the Christmas tree smell? Maybe you'll smell it when you go back out. Smells related to taste, right? So it's all in there. This time of year, our five senses are in overdrive, aren't they? Taking in the special things that we only experience this time of year or expect to experience this time of year. Christmas tree lots pop up in parking lots, twinkling lights on houses uh, we see as we drive through the neighborhood, the cuddly soft blanket that we snuggle under as we listen to Christmas music, drink our Christmas tea, and gaze at our Christmas tree. Today, we ponder for a moment the tastes of Christmas. I asked our staff what Christmas tastes like. They said, cinnamon and apple, which some may associate with fall, but they're also Christmas things. 
Russian tea balls, soft sugar cookies, not decorated, but plain with a little bit of sugar on them and a tiny bit of nutmeg. Very specific, these staff are. Eggnog, hot cocoa, peppermint sticks, but not candy canes, peppermint bark and peppermint stick ice cream and all of those things. Emmanuel, I forgot again. Coquito, which is a cinnamon and coconut drink from Puerto Rico. Tamales, peach coffee cake, cinnamon rolls, plum pudding and brandy butter, taco soup, fruit cake, oyster stew and oyster stuffing. Our list could have gone on and on. Anyone hungry yet? <laughs> when I think of Christmas, this is one of the tastes that I get. Brenda shared with the staff the spritzer cookies like the ones that my grandmother used to make. Brenda's were much more perfect than I ever made. I finally gave up making these cookies because my, uh, I didn't end up with my grandmother's cookie press when she was giving things away, and my cookie press was pretty terrible. But Brenda's cookies were the perfect bite of crisp cookie, sweet, delicate taste, cooked just right. They were wonderful. Anybody like to bake cookies? Anybody a baker? My grandmother always had at least two kinds of cookies ready to share year round. They were in a Tupperware on top of the, the microwave. On the other hand, I never bake cookies. My husband complains sometimes every once in a while that I never bake cookies and somehow I don't feel guilty about that until Christmas comes along. For some reason, I think that we have to make all of the cookies, but we never do, and so I feel guilty about it. I have to say, though, having not one but two churches with people who love to bake means that we never go without. <laughs> There's something about baking that is so very Advent, isn't it? We do some work, we put the tray in the oven, and then we have to wait. There are things that we can do while we wait, perhaps do a few dishes, wipe off the counter, but mostly we just wait. And then the smells start coming, the spices and the chocolate melting and the sugar caramelizing and the flour toasting and the butter crisping, and it all just smells like heaven, doesn't it? But you can't eat it quite yet. You have to wait. That's Advent, isn't it? Advent is our time of waiting. It's buying the gifts but not giving them yet. It's baking the cookies but not eating them yet. It's making the eggnog but letting it cure in the fridge for a few weeks or months. Advent is the time of creative waiting, the time when our attention is focused and when we see and we smell the progress, but not quite yet. Maybe you're not like me and you don't bake cookies, Advent and Christmas are full of other foods in other ways, right? No matter what you fix this season, the foods that we prepare are a symbol of the love of the season. In fact, almost any time we fix food, it is a gift of love to those that we're feeding. Have you ever thought about that? Food is love. There's a fabulously scientific article online titled, Food for Love, the Role of Food Offering in Empathetic Emotion Regulation. In it, the authors make the case that, quote, food offering is one of the earliest biobehavioral regulatory interactions between parent and child. It ensures survival of the child who is fully dependent on food provision by others. Further, the authors of this article argue, food offering becomes a means to increase positive effect for both recipient and, when, it, when the offer has the desired effect, provider. The sharing of food resources as well as the use of food as a support behavior increases interpersonal closeness. And then they offer a caution. If the regulatory success of of food offering becomes a replacement for other support behaviors, children will learn from an early age to use food as a primary means to soothe self and others, possibly resulting in eating disorders and a restricted range of coping behavior. 
I didn't read the whole article. This was the first paragraph. <laughs> it's from the National Institute of Health, and it had some great things in it. These scientists, well, the first paragraph at least, these scientists believe that we experience a closeness to people when we feed them and when we receive food from them. It was a long article to make that argument. And how we treat food and kids early on will help them to define their own relationship in food. We don't need to read that whole article to know this, right? Even if I don't read the whole thing, I know that people have been saying this for years. Social scientists and psychologists and even our own grandparents have told us that food is love. Maybe not your grandparents. Maybe not all of my grandparents. But the collective grandmothers and the collective aunties of our world of our, have been feeding their families for generations. And family, of course, meant anybody who sat down at the table, right? Food was the love language of my grandmother, who set the holiday, fam uh, holiday table for the aunts and the uncles with all the food, oyster stuffing and cranberry ice and turkey and ham and whatever. There were feasts every time I came to visit during college, and she sent me back to college with cookies and other goodies when I left. Graham always had the cookies on top of the microwave, but for birthdays, there were angel food cake and strawberries. Food was love for my other grandmother as well. I have to admit, I don't remember anything she ever cooked other than cucumber and onion salad. But she took me out to John's restaurant every time I came home from college, and she always sent me back to college with a bag, or three, of Werther's candies. There are other gifts of love that come in the form of food. Uncle Walt's candied walnuts that he brings to family celebrations. Ron's grandmother, who fixed a steak and baked potatoes every time we came to visit. My uncle's fresh fish that he would fry just perfectly, or the fish chowder I absolutely loved, or the smoked kingfish that he would give us. Food is love. The thing is, this is all big stuff. It's not just a bag of Werther's shared over a BLT and a burger at John's. It's love. It's not just a tin of cookies that Graham passed around the table. It's love. It's not just a bottle fed to a baby while snuggling close. It's love. At Christmas, we celebrate Emmanuel, which means God with us. At Christmas, we celebrate God who has left the, com the comforts of heaven to come to earth, as our passage from Philippians reminds us. At Christmas, we celebrate God who has taken the form of a human coming here on earth as a human. At Christmas, we celebrate that the God of the universe nursed from his mother's breast. At Christmas, we begin to imagine the God of the universe sat at a table and refused to eat his lentil stew. We can imagine the God of the universe had a sippy cup and ate mashed chickpeas and refused to eat the locusts that his cousin liked. The God of the universe ate bread and fish and figs and drank wine. The God of the universe spent tons and tons of time at the table with his friends and his enemies alike. The God of the universe knew that the dining table was a place of intimacy and love. All throughout scripture, we find Jesus at the table around food, sharing a meal. We find Jesus appearing at the breakfast on the beach. Jesus shows up in the meal at Emmaus. Jesus is there with Zacchaeus and the woman who washed his feet and Mary and Martha's house. He fed the crowds on the hillside. The table, literal or figurative, is important. Jesus knew food is love. In his book, From Tablet to Table, where community is found and identity is formed, Leonard Sweet claims, if we really want to learn someone's story, sitting down at the table, breaking bread together is the best way to start. Leonard Sweet names what Jesus knew the table, is a place for intimacy and love. 
We model that here at St. Mark's, don't we? We learn one another's story as we sit down at the table together and invite opportunities for others to do the same. I love that we had so many people who signed up for Food with Friends in this last round. You have the link in your bulletin if you want to sign up for the next round. It's a simple commitment, six to eight people coming together for food. That's it. I love that we have the marksmen and the margaritas who come together around food for conversation and fellowship and grounding in faith. Margaritas are meeting tomorrow night for real. Not last week, but tomorrow night. <laughs> I love that we have Soul Station pausing in the middle of the week on Wednesday nights at 5.30 to eat around the table, often a simple meal that nourishes the body while the conversation and the program and the communion nourish our soul. I love that we invite you to grab a cup of coffee and a cookie after worship, lingering for a bit around the Welcome Center with people that you know and meeting people that you don't know. I love that we have such a deep commitment to Nash Elementary School and to ICS and to the food bank. We provide food boxes each month at Nash and we donate time and items to ICS and the food bank. All of these help families of all shapes and sizes to have the resources they need to cook meals and share around the table. I love that monthly we cook at the Primavera Shelter, giving them a hot meal one Saturday a month that they can eat at the table. Food is love. The dining table is a place of intimacy and love. Community is formed around the table. Leonard Sweet says this, the table is a place of intimacy and those who feast at Jesus' table become family together in a new kind of relationship, one that obliterates dissension, walls, bloodlines, and divisions. Did you hear that? Those who feast at the table of Jesus become family together. And this family removes dissensions and walls, bloodlines, divisions, all those things that keep us apart from one another melt away when we sit at the table with one another and we eat. We may not agree, but the dissensions melt away. The walls melt away. Intimacy comes together. What a wonderful image of the table. As we prepare in this Advent season to spend time around tables in this coming weeks, I pray that you'll let the food cooked and served draw you closer to those you share the table with. Whether it's a TV dinner or a four-course menu, may you offer and receive the love that only food can bring. But back to Jesus for a minute. Our passage reminds us that Jesus is God in the flesh, in human form. Our scripture tells us that God took on human flesh and came down from heaven. And so we stand for just a minute in that stable, in that cattle stall, where baby Jesus was nursed by his mother. Human mother fed the God of the universe. Friends, Jesus came down to earth as love incarnate. Love came down at Christmas, love divine. Jesus came to show love. The God of the universe loved us so much that God became like us and nursed from his mother and ate veggies and lentil stew and fish. We are forever connected with God because God was like us. We are forever connected with each other because we all eat together. Later, Jesus sat at the table and told his followers and told us that the God of the universe now was feeding humanity. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The God of the universe, fed by his mother, now in turn fed humanity. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. When we sit at the table and taste the food before us, let us remember that God is good. When we sit at the table and taste what has been prepared for us, let us remember that God is good. When we sit at the table, look around at the people with us or remember those who have eaten before us 
and give thanks to a good God who knows the intimacy of eating at the table with those that he loved and with those who would betray him. When we sit at the table, taste and give thanks to our good God who loves us. I want to leave you this morning with words from Leonard Sweet. Leonard Sweet claims that all of the Bible can be summed up into six sentences. Are you ready for this? The Old Testament says this, they tried to kill us, we survived, let's eat. (laughs) The New Testament says, I love you, I forgive you, let's eat. May you know the love of God who invites us to taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. Oh God, in this time of waiting, we continue the work of preparing our hearts, our lives, our houses, our refrigerators for Christmas. We remember Christmas's past where the table was maybe a bit more full. We remember Christmas's past where the table was a little bit more empty. God, wherever we are in this time, may we continue to wait, to watch for your love at work in this world to notice the intimacy and love that happens when we sit at the table with someone else, to remember the intimacy and love of tables shared in days past. God, we know that you are good, and we pray that you would help us to remember, to share that with others as we share food that we can offer. Oh God, you are good. We give thanks. Amen.
So the um, counselor in residence program that we have here uh, would like to invite you to a service of longing or blue Christmas, it's sometimes called. Um, it's a long, uh, longest night service or whatever you want to call it. It's a service designed to acknowledge that everything this season may not be merry and bright. The service will acknowledge feelings around the death of a loved one and stuff that we see on the news and, or health concerns and just that blah feeling that you might experience during the holidays. And the details are in your bulletin or in the monthly newsletter. If you have a prayer request and you're online, uh, you can use that same QR code or you can uh, email the church office at UMC, no, at info at umcstmarks.org. Those of you who are in the pews will see a white uh, paper card on the pew, in the pew pockets in front of you if you have a prayer request. Any of you can email us. So would you please join me in prayer? God, as we light the Advent candles and draw nearer to Christmas, we pause for a moment to take a deep breath and put aside the hustle and bustle of the season. We wait for Christmas as we anticipate the telling of the story of your son's birth. As we get closer to Christmas, we praise the name of Jesus and we are inspired to try to be better people. We remember that you sent your son to show us how to be those people. God, for the traditions of this season, especially in the foods we eat, we give you thanks. For the fond memories of Christmas's past, we give you thanks. For those who have passed down the story of Christmas, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the symbols and the foods that help us rejoice in the miracle of the birth of Christ. God, we are grateful to be able to share the miracle of that birth as we take the coming weeks to prepare to celebrate the birth of your son, stir in our hearts and in the hearts of all people the love of Christ. God, we confess that we sometimes get so wrapped up in the traditions and gift giving that we don't fully see those who are alone during Christmas, those who are sick, those who are mourning, and those who have lost hope. Let us be beacons of light for those who can't find joy. At the same time, we know that we cannot fully tell the story of the birth of a Savior until we see all of your people as our brothers and sisters. Remind us that not all people have celebrations to look forward to. Show us the way to humble ourselves as Mary and Joseph did. Many of us are blessed with good health and surrounded by people who care for us. We pray for those who are not feeling loved today. We pray for those who are missing loved ones this Christmas. Show them your love through us, Lord. In this season of preparations and celebrations, we pray for world peace. God, we read scripture and sing carols about the Prince of Peace, and yet we still have reason to mourn for those whose countries are being ravaged by war. We pray that all of humanity can learn to treat each other with dignity and not judge those who are different in their eyes. God, we ask that you soften the hearts of those who seek to do harm. We pray for those who are struggling with unemployment or inadequate financial resources. For those who are in poor health, we pray for skilled medical people and proper medicine. For those who are mourning, we pray for comfort. We give thanks for all of our blessings and we praise you, God, for all you have given us. In the name of the Christ child whom we celebrate this season, we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray, singing to the tune of It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, our Lord's Prayer. Oh
God's kingdom is all about love, love for God, love for neighbor, love for yourself. Just like God gave God's self to be with you with Jesus, what better way for you to show love than to give? Your resources, yourself, when you give generously to this congregation, you help love to expand. This year, our Christmas offering will benefit our ministries with Nash and Estes Elementary Schools. We did not mail out envelopes, but encourage you to use the offering envelopes in the seat back or designate your gift in other appropriate ways. Our ushers now come to receive your gifts of your prayer and attendance cards and your financial gifts. God, may gifts given here today and those we have given electronically help to expand love, love across the world, love within our homes, and love within ourselves. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn. I don't know if you noticed our beautiful new candlesticks on the altar, but wanted to acknowledge um, the gift that they are from um, the extended family of the hills. So I don't exactly remember the name, but thank you very much, you who are watching, who gave us our candlesticks. They're uh, lovely blown glass, handmade. Um, so thank you. Um, go into this world as people of love. Uh, we are... Um, we worship love incarnate, love in the flesh. And so may you go and share that love with others as we wait during this Advent season. Will you join me in singing our benediction to one another?
I will see you back here at 3 o'clock today for our um, concert, and then again Saturday and Sunday next week for even more concerts. So go in peace and in love. Let us sing our shalom to one another. Don't forget to grab a postcard on your way out.